What we actually want to figure out is biological age. And that is, again, the morbidity risk, mortality risk, and quality of life metrics. So this would be your ability to, like your your grip strength, your sit-stand ability unassisted, your gait speed, all of those types of things that really play a role in, in our quality of life as we get older. And so second generation tests started to look at that. That's what, for example, the grim age clock is that I just mentioned. That's a second generation clock. Third generation clock is what I hold at the highest level. Um, this is something that my company has licensed from Columbia and Duke University researchers to make it more freely available. But uh, a third generation test is actually looking at your trajectory of aging right now. So for example, if your result was one, that means for every one chronological year, you're aging one year biologically. If it was 1.1, you're aging 10% faster. Or if it, as in my case, is 0.69, that implies that I'm aging 31% slower than the average person. And the, the beauty of this is that it's, it's uh, not immutable. This is malleable. This is something that your lifestyle is going to impact uh, the pace at which you're, you're aging. And believe it or not, only about 10% of your rate of aging in your, your lifespan is uh, based on your genetics. The vast majority of it is actually your lifestyle. And I think I'm a case in point of this. I had a brain tumor, and yet I still have and, and, and traumatic events like that, stressful events to the body can accelerate aging. So the fact that I was able to get it down to what it is now is just a case in point example of how powerful our lifestyles can be for our rate of aging. Oh, yeah. You definitely had that obstacle early on that it's a factor that you had to probably try much harder to, to, to reduce your aging. One other quick question about these tests, are they just blood tests or are they kind of a combination of like fitness tests and things like that? So the third generation one is a blood test. Um, it's very simple. So it's just a finger prick. And then you, you spread that uh, blood on an index card about the size of a quarter. And then you mail that in. There are other epigenetic tests out there that I would just caution the listener to be aware of, like saliva-based tests, although they're more convenient, they are far less accurate and precise. And the, the analogy I like to give is like, if you were trying to lose weight, how helpful would a scale be if each time you stepped on it, it varied by 10 pounds plus or minus, and you have no idea how much it's varying by each time. You wouldn't get very far on your weight loss journey. So it's the same when it comes to a longevity long, a longevity journey. Mm, okay, so you're saying blood tests is more accurate than saliva tests. Yes. I mean, it's amazing to me that even a prick is enough to, to tell you all that information. That's insane to me. <laughs> I thought you had to like run on treadmills and do all these other things, like hook up, hook yourself up to the system. Yeah, which 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 is great. And I, I've done all of those things as well, right? So I, I would say like if you're really into it like I am, then uh you you try all of these other tests and then you see if they're in agreement with each other. So for example, uh what you're referring to, uh when, when you have like the mask on and you've got the wires on your chest and so on, that's measuring uh, VO2 max that I mentioned earlier. Oh. And so that for me. Um, implies 30% slower aging, which is like right in the neighborhood of the 31% slower aging that the epigenetic test found. So the more of these markers that I find that are like closely grouped together in terms of the um, association of a biological age, the more confident I feel in those results. Very cool. All right. So now I'm sure everyone is curious. Let's get into like the practical lifestyle guidance. You're here, you're the expert. Like what are the Things that everyday people can do <laughs> to improve or to slow down their uh, age aging rate. Yes. So, you know, there's a lot of health advice out there. And what I would say is that simply because something seems to be healthy or provides a short term benefit that's associated with health does not mean it's actually good for longevity or lifespan. I'll give you an example, a quick, simple example. Uh, someone might say, you know, becoming a marathoner or a triathlete or something like that's the pinnacle of human achievement, physical achievement, right? Like, uh, but ultimately those types of events, ultra endurance events and, and uh, longer events like that can actually lead to excess inflammation in the body. And that can actually have negative effects on, for example, cardiovascular outcomes. So just because something seems to be healthy 
doesn't mean that it's actually tuned for the, the specific goal of slowing down aging. So with that in mind, uh, I would say that there, there's a number of categories to consider and we can dig into any of these yeah, that you care to. Yeah, get into it. Uh, yep. All right. So, so you've got diet and for diet, it comes down to not only what foods you're eating and the quantity of those foods, but also the timing of those meals. Um, second would be activity. So how much activity are you engaging in? Uh, like I said, you can do too much, but for most people, it's that they're doing too little exercise. Um, next is recovery. So especially if you're exercising, but even if you're not, you need adequate recovery. And the best way to recover is sleep. So when it comes to sleep, you need to focus not only on the quantity of sleep, how long you're asleep for, but arguably as important or more important is the quality of that sleep. Another factor to consider is psychology. Everything from stress management to uh, optimism to having a purpose in life, all of these have been associated with longer lifespans and better health spans, so reduction in risk of many different diseases. Connected to that is relationships. So, you know, as humans, we are highly social creatures and uh, we, we can't deny that about ourselves. So having positive relationships in our lives has been shown to have uh, positive effects on our lifespans and our health spans. And the magic number uh, is to have three close, positive friends in your life. And to try to, of course, minimize any sort of toxic relationships, but having three people you consider you're close to that you can talk to about practically anything and they keep you in high spirits and so on, that's the magic number. If you're going beyond that, like, hey, maybe it's a marginal improvement, but also keep in mind if you have too many people, then you might not be as close to those people as you would be if you had that core group of three friends. And then beyond that, I would say other considerations are supplements uh, and even prescription drugs. But um, for most people, prescription drugs are, are too far out there, but there are enthusiasts in the field uh, that are using specific prescriptions that have been shown in animal studies, um, even, even primates, for example, to be able to significantly extend lifespan and health span. <laughs> 